All right, welcome to video nine for the summer homework packet. In this video will cover problems 23 and 24, and we'll wrap up number 25 in video 10. All right, 23a is asking us to express x in terms of the other variables in the picture. And we're given a triangle inside of a triangle with t, h, x, and r. And when we have a case like this, and we'll see this a couple times in calculus, what we can conclude using geometry is that the smaller triangle is similar to the larger triangle. In other words, the ratio will be the same. So the base to the height of the small triangle is equal to the base to the height of the larger triangle. So there's the equation that we can conclude from the diagram and then from there what we want to do is solve that for x. So let's multiply the r across rt over h equals x plus t and finally rt over h minus t is equal to x. Alright, 23b is relying on the same scenario of a triangle inside of a triangle, so we can make similar similarity statements. And in this case we have R and H right here. The full hypotenuse of the large one is X and the full base of the small one is T. So on our large one we have the hypotenuse and the base, but on the small one we have the hypotenuse and the height. So what we want to do is figure out a value for that base. And because it's a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to conclude that this is going to be, we'll call it, we'll call it A, and we could say A squared plus H squared is equal to R squared. And if we're solving that value for A, we get A is the square root of R squared minus H squared. So that's the value of that base. Now we can do a comparison of base to hypotenuse. So for the big triangle, base to hypotenuse is t to x. And for the small triangle, base to hypotenuse is that. And we want to solve this equation for x. So we're going to cross multiply and we'll get r rt is equal to x r squared minus h squared and then divide the square root and I made a mistake there, let me erase that that should be rt there we go, equals x so we had to do a little bit of front end work but again, what we did is we drew a similarity statement. The base to the hypotenuse is equal to the base to the hypotenuse. Alternatively, if we wanted to, we could have found a value for the height, and we'll call that um, we'll call that b, and we could have set up a relationship b to x is equal to h to r and we just need to figure out what b is in terms of the given variables. All right, moving on to problem number 24. It looks like we're doing some more geometry type calculations. For 24a, what we have is a square, and inside the square is a circle of radius r. And we're being asked to find the ratio of the area inside the square but outside the circle to the area of the square in the picture. So we want the ratio of the shaded area to the whole thing. So let's do the shaded area. This square has a side length of 2r and another side length of 2r. So the whole square has a area of 4r squared and the shaded area is going to be 4r squared minus the 
area of the circle, which is pi r squared. And we could probably do some factoring here if we wanted to. We could pull an r squared out of the top and an r squared out of the bottom. And those cancel, and we get that as an answer. Which is kind of interesting, because that value will always be a constant value. Regardless of the radius of the circle, we're going to always arrive at that same value for the ratio of the shaded area to the full square. Okay, for 24B, what we have is a square window with a semicircle on top, or maybe it's not quite a square window, it looks a little rectangular, with a height of R and a radius of R. That would make the base of that window 2R. And they want us to find a formula for the perimeter of the window. So let's just add up the square sides. We've got r plus 2r plus r, so there's our square side, and to that we're going to add the curved area. Well, we know the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, and if we have half of a circle, we're going to divide that by 2. So the top half of the window has the value of pi r. And if we add this all up, we get 4r plus pi r, or if we want to write it in factored form, r times 4 plus pi. Either of them work. Uh, I think this is probably where most people would take it. 24c. Looks like we have a water tank in the shape of a cone, and this kind of pops up in uh, optimization problems or related rates problems in calculus. Uh, this this simple cone shape and the tank is 10 meters high and has a radius of 3 meters at the top. It says if the water is 5 meters deep so our water is at the height of 5 meters what is the surface area of the top of the water? So we want to know what is the area of this circle. So one thing that we can see is that we have a case of similar triangles here. The smaller triangle for the water and then the larger triangle for the whole cone. And because of that we can say that we can have a ratio of 10 to 3 is equal to 5 to the water's ratio, radius, which I'll call as r. So if we solve for r, we're going to get 10r equals 15r equals 1.5. And that kind of makes sense if we've gone up half the distance of the cone, we're going to have half the radius because of the nature of the cone. Now, that's not the question they ask us. They actually ask us what is the area of the, the surface area of the water. So now that we know the, sur the radius of that circle, we can do area equals pi r squared. Area equals pi r squared to find out that that is 2.25 pi. And of course, in this case, we have units, so we'd want to include our units, area in meters be meters squared. And if we had a calculator, we could multiply that out. 2.25 is roughly 2 times 3, which is about 6. So I'm looking for around a number between 6 and 7. And the calculator tells me 7.069. Okay, 24D, we've got two cars that start moving from the same point. The first car travels south at 100 kilometers per hour. And 
and it does this for a total time of two hours. So it went south at 100 kilometers per hour for two hours, so it's traveled a total distance of 200 kilometers. The second car, being a junker, was only able to travel at 50 kilometers per hour for a total time of two hours, so it traveled a distance of 100 kilometers. And they ask, how far apart are they? This is a right triangle problem. The first one went south, the second one went west, and we want to know the total distance between them. So we can do the Pythagorean theorem with our two values. 100 squared plus 200 squared equals the hypotenuse squared. So we get 10,000 1, 2, 3, 4 plus 40,000 equals h squared 50,000 equals h squared and if we take the square root of 50,000 we will get the distance apart. And it looks like they're 223.607 miles away from each or sorry, kilometers away from each other. This connects to common uh, related rates problems in calculus. You'll see this often. Okay. Finally, for 24E, what we have is we have a kite that's flying in the air and it looks like the kite is 100 meters off the ground. If there's a 200 meter string, then the string is probably doing something like this, down to a little kid out playing in the park with his parents. That's an awful drawing of a kid. Ugly kid. His parents still love him, though. Okay, so there he is flying his kite, and we want to know the angle between the string and the horizontal. So there's some uh, ground that the guy's standing on. There's the grass. And we are being asked, what is the angle between the string and the ground? So if the string is 200 meters, this looks like a trigonometry problem where we have, from the kid's point of view, the opposite side and the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So which trig function uses opposite and hypotenuse? Go to the old faithful SOCATOA and we see that sine is opposite of our hypotenuse. So sine of theta is equal to 100 over 200 which is one half, and then we rely on a unit circle or our left hand trick to find out when is sine of theta equal to one half, and that occurs at pi over six radians, or if you're into degrees, 30 degrees. Fortunately for us, they told us that we can assume that the string is perfectly straight. If the string actually did curve, like kite strings tend to, this would be a much, much more difficult problem to do. All right, thanks for watching. We've got uh, one more problem to do, which I'll wrap up in video number 10.